really proud to be part of it and have the opportunity to make this uh, this exhibition for uh, our friend Colin. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you guys. Drink some beer while you're here. Help us finish our beer. Help us pay our rent. Uh, if you worked on it, thank you. If you're volunteering tonight, thank you. If you're eating pizza tonight, thank you. Um, come back to the reliquary. Please remain remain uh, supporting us. And uh, we got more pizza coming. Hold tight. And uh, the slice harvester. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's really loud right in my ear. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming. This means a lot to me. Thank you so much to Bill Skonga right here, because he did all the work in this, for this whole show. I didn't do any of this. I didn't do any of this. Bill did all the work. Bill Skonga for the awesome display made, on the back wall. He made the whole back wall. He framed all those pictures. He printed all those pictures. He painted the wall. He made the sign. He made the sign in the window. He did everything. This would be nothing without him. I'm just nobody. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read to you some, uh, some text from the, uh, the newest issue of the magazine version of the website, Slice Harvester Quarterly. Here it is. Um, the, uh, I should make the, the, uh, the, the merch announcement that everyone's got to make when they have a microphone in their hand, which is that these are for sale for the first time ever, this issue and the old issues for the millionth time ever, tonight in the backyard. My uh, beautiful girlfriend, Cha-Cha, is at the merch table. Go visit her and... Uh, Tell you some zines. She's a very charming woman, and uh, I got a good, good pair of earrings, nice head of hair, and uh, I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna read because I'm I'm dying out here just <laughs> winging it. It's not it's no good. Um, so I'm gonna read some reviews of uh, pizzerias. This is uh it's for a place called Sacco Pizza, on uh, 819 Ninth Avenue between 54th and 55th Street. Ma Harvester, that's my mother. Ma Harvester <laughs> and me discussed the possibility upon approaching this place. Uh, this, as, uh, Ma Harvester and me <laughs> discussed the possibility upon approaching that this place was named after Nicholas Sacco, the famous persecuted anarchist. And we're both hoping like hell it would rule because, I don't know about you guys, but nothing works up my appetite like an imprisoned or executed anarchist. Uh, <laughs> parenthetical statement, proposed business ideas, empanada Goldman, if I can't eat it's not my revolution, or... August pies, make dessert a riot. Uh, and aside from the tenuous political alliance I have with the name, the place looks like the kind of dingy shithole that I love. I'm gonna take my reading glasses off to read. Uh, seriously, it was cramped as fuck in there with all the construction workers waiting to eat. Both me and me madre breathed a huge sigh of relief at the prospect of finally having a good slice. Because Sacco Pizza feels right. Sadly, the slice is shit. But if we just got a bum slice, it must have been from a bum pie. Not only did this pizza not taste good, but it tasted like the absence of flavor. This is like the anti-pizza. Texturally, it was a nightmare, but that has some historic context. See, back in the day when Christopher Columbus, Larry Flint, Mike Eisner, and Sylvester Stallone had to flee communism in Italy and take their divinely ordained homeland, the good old U.S. of A., back from the socialist Indians, they didn't have time to let their pizza dough leaven because they had to leave surreptitiously under cover of night. As such, they packed their cheese, dough, and sauce into containers, and then they had to cook their pizza in the sun on the roof of their Hummer as they drove across the desert, <laughs> fleeing Fidel Castro's army of cloned Hitlers. Sure, it wasn't the best pizza, but it was enough to nourish them for the long drive, and the great Pizzaiola, God bless her, used her magic to grant them the ability to not have to pee so they never had to pull over, and the Hitlers could never catch up because they were riding on segways. <laughs> As such, every year around Thanksgiving, traditional pizzerias cook their pizza with unleavened dough to remember the struggle that our forefathers went through in order to establish a homeland for their previously nomadic people, free market capitalists. So that's the review of Sacco Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> uh, up next, this is a place called Prince Pizza at 642 Lexington Avenue between 54th and 55th. Prince Pizza is a wonderful place. I wish beyond wishes that every slice joint could feel the same inside as Prince Pizza. As I walked up to the line to order, Aaron walked straight back to the seating area. The hypervigilant proprietor watched intently as Aaron sat down at the table and then eyed me suspiciously. I returned his stone grill. Let me get one regular slice. <laughs> Just one? And his eyes drifted towards Aaron in the back. Yeah, one. I like this guy. He didn't trust me. 
<laughs> when I joined Aaron at the table, he said, I like that guy. He's either got a dislocated shoulder or the best natural swagger I've ever seen. The back seating area of Prince Pizza looks like a bathroom. Tiles in Formica, tiles in Formica, tiles in Formica everywhere. You know the drill. There is years worth of filth discoloring the ground. This may sound like an indictment to anyone who is a totally shitty snob, but the fact of the matter is that everywhere should be this picturesquely decrepit. It didn't seem dirty, just well-worn, like my dead dog Ramon's split t-shirt. It can be straight out of the wash and smell so fresh and so clean, but it will never be pristine in color because it's got permanent dirt. While we were sitting back there, our companions were a couple of bored teenagers, a bike messenger, as opposed to a bike messenger, which is what I used to be, and a few mumbling weirdos. Didn't seem like much of an office lunch crowd, more like the dregs of the neighborhood stopping in to chow down. And that was a real pleasant change of, place from, change of pace from most of the other places I've been around here. <laughs> the bummer beneath the beauty is that the, the slice totally stinks. Aaron called it loafy. I thought it tasted like sugar. The dough was too thick and not salty enough, the cheese was bland, and the sauce was hella Heinz. Wildly disappointing, considering how smitten both AC and me were with the interior. And we are both connoisseurs of corrosion. If there was a picturesque shithole aficionado magazine, we would be the editors. I'll probably still come back here and suffer the bad pizza for the excellent environs. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. Oh! Ultimate Pizza. It's on uh, East 57th Street at First Avenue. This is, uh, I want to dedicate this review to my, my dear friend Corey Hole, who couldn't be here tonight because he's in the Catskills. Yesterday I was riding my bike up First Avenue and sending my friend Corey a text message that said, See you soon, smiley face, kiss symbol, when I nearly got mushed by a truck whose driver was also sending a text message. <laughs> we shared a knowing glance and exactly zero fuck yous were exchanged. <laughs> I quickly remembered that I shouldn't do that and put my phone in my pocket, but for some reason afterwards I couldn't stop singing back in the saddle again in my head. In the end... I did successfully meet Corey without being pummeled by any vehicles, and conveniently enough, we were both exactly 15 minutes late for our rendezvous, so no one was mad at anyone. When I first met Corey some years ago, he was a teenager, and I was in my 20s. At that point, not that it's so easily measurable, he was definitely at least as cool as me. At this point, he is way cooler than I am. I don't mean easier to get along with, or more fun to hang out with, because he's neither of those things. But he's definitely really guilelessly cool in this way that's totally compelling for me. Like, he is exactly what I always imagined a cool guy would be like when I was in middle school, minus the Jenkos and the, great, the braided goatee. Uh, anyway, he's someone I've known for a long time, and because we're both busy, productive people, we don't really get an opportunity to hang out as much as we'd like. Spending a day with him was a real pleasure. Ultimate Pizza was not so ultimate. Though there were a lot of windows and plenty of natural light, it's in a sort of half basement, and there's something kind of dire about eating pizza below sidewalk level. The place is also tremendously ugly on the inside, and the slice is three dollars. Three dollars. <laughs> the situation. The slice had an almost great texture, although the crust crumbled a bit too much on each bite. Something just wasn't right. The sauce was too sweet for both Corey and me, the cheese was bland, a textural experience, but not a taste experience, and overall, the slice just wasn't hot enough. It wasn't a terrible slice, but definitely not worth $3. Okay, what do we got here? Crunch Pizza Bar. 980 2nd Avenue. 50, between 51st and 52nd. Uh, Crunch Pizza Bar. Oy vey. What a strange place. The guy working behind the counter was outside smoking when Corey and I walked up. He was very friendly, looked just like Pitbull, the Miami rapper, and was wearing this wild bejeweled Michael Jordan shirt. He kept telling us about how good and filling the mac and cheese slice was. And me and Corey kept being like, I don't know, man. I think we'll just split one regular. This place was weird. All the slices were rectangular and looked crazy, but they had some seemingly fancy shit at pretty decent prices. Like, they had a bunch of cured meat slices for like $3 with pancetta and soppressata on them, which is kind of cool. Pitbull was a... Sure. <laughs> Pitbull was a sweetheart, though, and he cut the slice in two pieces for us. What a gem. Corey criticized his sales pitch, saying, What kind of argument is that? I don't want to walk into a dining establishment and have the only selling point of the food I'm about to get be that it's filling. 
I think the dude just pegged us both for broke scums right away and knew we were going to share a slice, so he was trying to clue us into the most possible food for the least possible money. By the way, the slice was weird. It totally tasted like the frozen French bread pizzas my mom used to go to the supermarket. They weren't in a box pre-made in, in a factory, but they were in the deli section, and I imagine they made and froze them at the supermarket because they were wrapped in plastic wrap on those little styrofoam trays that the damn chicken breasts and shit come on. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe it's just an East Coast supermarkets thing because Corey remembers them. In any case, fucking whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> While we were eating our pizza, a rainbow coalition of Vin Diesels came into the restaurant together. They were funny. It was like a black Vin Diesel, a Latino Vin Diesel, a Middle Eastern Vin Diesel, and a white Vin Diesel. <laughs> they all had Bluetooth Robocop ears and J-Lo shades and weird variations on basically the same outfit, which consisted of ripped at the knee, factory distressed jeans, and shirts that were tight enough to see their pecs and biceps. And they all talked just like Vin Diesel. It's always pretty cool seeing a Vin Diesel in its natural habitat, because I'm not usually in those kind of places, but seeing a whole pride of Vin Diesel was almost too much to bear. I think the food they serve at Crunch Pizza Bar is the type of food Vin Diesel's prefer to consume. And now that I think about it, maybe I was wrong about our salesman's pitch. It's totally possible that the reason he was harping on the fillingness of the mac and cheese slice was because all the Vin Diesel's come straight from the gym and are all, I'm hungry, bro. Um, side note, I, uh, I'm a fan of Vin Diesel on Facebook. Um, I love Vin Diesel so much, I'm not even kidding. I think he's such a great cultural phenomenon. And he put up this, yesterday he put up this like very thoughtful rumination on like wishing well to all the people in Japan. And it was accompanied by a picture of himself shirtless, flexing his muscles and like looking at the skyline standing on a beach. <laughs> what a fucking hero. That guy is like a fucking hero. Vin Diesel. If someone knows him, get him to come eat pizza with me. I'll, I'll give you a blowjob. I don't fucking care. <laughs>